Okay, tick tock, tick tock. Are you ready? For the 50th time we've taken this, yes, I am ready. <laughs> okay, guys, this is the Sugar Cookie Marketing Podcast. Corey and I are trying to understand audio levels. We are struggling, but bear with. We'll figure it out one of these days. It may may not be today, though. If you ever notice that Corey, this is Corey speaking, sounds <laughs> muted some weeks and then hyper loud other weeks, that is thanks to twin number one. Because Heather. sometimes Corey just shouts into the poor little tiny mic, and then sometimes she's like, a mile away yelling over to it and it's whatever i'm feeling today girl <laughs> whatever your head is man just keep it there in the, the entire... cloud <laughs> <laughs> okay Corey. so this is the sugar cookie marketing podcast let's pretend somebody clicked too far actually this is season two episode one as well i decided it is time guys she decided literally 60 seconds ago let's just make this season two and then it will help me stay organized because I feel like a lot of people are digital hoarders. And just because you can't see it, they feel like it is fine. Why are you staring at me right now? Because just keep talking. Okay. So digital hoarding is something I am proficient at. I love to have my photos on my person at all times. My my phone is at 99.9% capacity. It is, Corey. I can't. Corey. I can't. Corey. I can't. This isn't an intervention. This isn't a podcast. <laughs> We welcome you here, all 20,000 of us. Yeah, okay. You hear that screeching? That's Corey laughing into the mic, guys. And I can't help you. That is on your own. I've tried. I've turned things up. I've turned things down. But, okay, let's pretend someone clicked too far. Okay, sorry. Our cat suddenly <laughs> hears our voices and wants to run out of I the room. I don't blame him. <laughs> okay, okay. Has the cat issue been addressed? The cat has been removed from the building. The cat has left the building. Okay, let's pretend somebody accidentally clicked too far on Spotify and landed on this podcast. Corey, what could they expect? First off, my apologies. Um, you click too far. Please return back a few Spotify's ago and get to where you were going. Also, but what also, were you clicking on? And you, what were you looking for? I need to replicate that, you know, <laughs> do some marketing with that or something like that. But if you are just finding us, we are the Sugar Cookie Marketing Group Creators, and we have created a podcast for bakers by bakers to help you make that dough while you're making that dough. Is it just saying everything in redundancy? For bakers, by bakers. Making dough, making dough. I just feel like I could just, oh, a motto. Look, catch a motto out there. <laughs> Regardless, I like it. And you had me at hello. Okay, so our intro was supposed to be TikTok, TikTok. Not sure if we did it because we did this five times. So we do want to talk about, for the marketing minutes, TikToks. TikToks. Shudder and horror. Scared. Na, na, frightened. Sweat. Na, na, begins to na, na. pull at your back. Right, na, okay. Na, na. Why are we talking about TikToks? We are talking about TikToks because Heather forced me into this challenge she created where we are going to do one TikTok every day for 30 days. Right. So really the challenge was for me and Corey, but you guys got brought into it because I feel like if we have to do it, so do you. Otherwise, you should feel like you're a bad marketer. But Instagram, and I know we just said Instagram, we're talking TikToks, they are related TikTok, the app, has taken over social media by storm and Instagram noticed and they hate it. So in TikTok being a video-based app, Instagram being a photography-based app, Instagram says, hey guys, thanks for the photos, no more photos. We would rather you post videos and we'll be favoring videos. Now to post to Instagram, in what avenues can you post a video? You can post IGTV, like nobody does. You can do stories. Mm -hmm. You can do video through your feed, and now you can do reels. Right. So that is really confusing. <laughs> but they're all different channels to get that app to work for you. And you can cross post to a bunch of them. So I can, I use, I'm not sure if you can still, can you take a, a photo post and push it out through your stories? Send mm. it through your stories? I think you can post it and then send it to your stories. Right. So that's one way. Reels, you can post to your feed and to your reels. Yeah. IGTV, Bastion Child, I'm not sure what you do with those. <laughs> and then um, what was the other option? Uh, you can actually just have a native video in your feed. Okay, great. So, so a lot of video. options there. And Instagram says, hey, guys, if you continue posting photos, cool, you're just not going to reach as many. In the world of marketing, unfortunately, we're slaves to reach. And when someone says, hey, you can reach more this way, it's not something we can ignore all too readily. Totally a side random note. But at Disney World, me and Heather were literally two feet from each other when we were going to bed. I like to go to bed a tinge bit early. But Heather, just snickering in the silent dead of the night at TikTok for what seemed like hours. 
If you guys have ever sipped the Dave Ramsey Kool-Aid, he's really big about canceling any subscription services. <laughs> this is I not did. a good excuse. <laughs> Which I did. So I don't have Netflix. I don't have, I do have Prime. Corey knows because she steals it. Um, but I don't watch a ton of TV. But what I have supplemented is this free, how TikTok is free, I don't know. It is wildly entertaining. And it's because the videos on TikTok are uh, they used to be only 15 seconds or 60 seconds, but recently in the past two months, they've allowed three minutes. Um, all of them, love them all. Love them. Haven't went, met one TikTok I don't want to watch. <laughs> Heather giggles every 15 seconds. <laughs> and I'm constantly just sending them, like sending them to Corey. No, there's no there's no even captions anymore. Not like, oh, I think you'd like this. Or just watch it. <laughs> watch it. Don't watch it. I don't care. <laughs> um, so Corey, explain to me if I've never heard of TikTok or if I only heard of it through my kids what is it and how can I use it as a baker? Okay, TikTok is a video-based platform. Um, it is 100% videos. It's not necessarily photos. Photos do not perform on there like they do on Instagram, but it's short, kitschy videos that um, your audience can connect to right off the bat. So you can fall, happen upon a video and really connect to the creator without having ever seen them before. Um, it's definitely... a uh, trends base platform and the the algorithm on tiktok seems almost really unpredictable unlike instagram you kind of see a, a relationship to the amount of followers you have in tiktok you could be an overnight success and then never get another view yeah. for the next one it's videos. insane like people are like one hit wonders on there <laughs> right it's truly like the first bump's always the cleanest you know our little sister and she doesn't listen to this so we freely talk about her on it she posted an a TikTok, mm, and she, it got how many views in how much time? With the one I made for her? With a cat? Okay. So yeah. I, from the caves of my own brain, came up with a genius marketing TikTok where my little sister got probably, it was 95,000 views in less than 24 hours. Right. That's 95,000 people she reached. And I know what you're asking is, well, most people aren't going to buy from me. No, actually, Gardy's Goodies, she's created, carved out quite a name for herself on TikTok. Yeah. And uh, she's a baker. She's even in the group. Um, she, and I know I've talked about it before, kind of does this ASMR uh, decorating video. So she voices over them with kind of random stories about her life. And then you're watching her live decorate. And she gets paid for it. Yeah, and what's fascinating is she, like, was decorating – this is back when she first started. She was decorating the 14,000 follower cookie. Like, yeah. she was – but she had already surpassed it so far. So she's like, yeah, I'm sorry I'm posting this, and I'm nowhere near that number anymore because of the exponential growth on the platform. Do I think that is forever? No, because as these trends get more popular, as TikTok gets more popular, a lot more people are jumping onto the platform. Mm. Um, so that first stage goodies that you get for being the – the first one. Yeah, hey, you're new here. Grab a seat in the front. Real nice. <laughs> and then a couple hours later, you're in the CD back and you can't see light anymore. Right. So I definitely think TikTok is a fun platform. It's definitely where I go for some laughs to see what Heather sent me and things like that. Heather really enjoys it. But it's definitely a different feel than Instagram. Right. So in the interesting thing, okay, so for you page, that's a TikTok terminology. On Instagram, it's called the Explorer feed. Mm -hmm. um, basically connecting to somebody that you don't readily know, that you're not connected to. So the for you page and the um, what's Explorer, feed? Explorer feed are very algorithm based. Yes. So Corey's TikTok, if you go through it, it is 100% dogs. Unfortunately, yeah. That's yeah, all I got because going she on. started engaging. So TikTok's really heavy on the algorithm, you know, at, based off of how long you watch a video, who you're connected with and how many people you send it to. Now, Instagram's kind of turning into that way as well, saying, hey, reels are kind of the wild west. Anybody can see them. So what you're going to put out there, we're going to create almost this Instagram version of a for you page. Right. So what Heather has, what we've seen and what some people have said is, hey, oh my goodness, I posted my first reel and I got thousands of views. It's almost like that untethered TikTok feel when it first happened and everyone got all the views or whatnot. Uh -huh. TikTok, I mean, Instagram is kind of letting people who are coming and using the reels get that kind of movement. So back to our TikTok Instagram reels challenge, we're going to challenge group members and ourselves inclu included to post 30 videos to both platforms in 30 days. So one video a day. But here's the thing, the hacks around it is batch recording, saving in drafts, um, recording and cross posting and things like that to really make our time worth it. So today we filmed how many? Four or five. Four or five. And, um, but I only posted one. And then tomorrow, you know, when the challenge starts, I'll post another, post another, post another. Right. Um, the interesting thing is, so we posted the same video on both platforms at the same time. 
I know what you're thinking. You just downloaded it from TikTok, uploaded it to Instagram. We did not. We created it in Instagram. I screen recorded the video so there was no Instagram overlay on the download. And then we posted it kind of natively to Instagram at the same time. You switched those. You said Instagram first, but Crampy only. yeah, but I think they they were tracking. Okay, we got guys, some smarties. Stay with me. We posted it to TikTok first, then I cross posted it to Instagram. I know at my the mind same was time. like Instagram overlay. And when Corey's eyes turned would into have I been blazed <laughs> I want an overlay. But the t- yeah, okay. So when you download from TikTok, yes. TikTok puts an overlay on the video. And it will say a little TikTok, and as your video moves, I think that little it like almost moves. gets out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> good and then it puts the handle on it after yes. wherever you stowed it from. Yeah. Um, so the final numbers. So we posted that what around ten this morning. Yeah. So so we do have quite a few more followers on Instagram around twenty six hundred. Okay. On TikTok around six hundred. Oh, okay. No wonder we're doing the show. <laughs> TikTok. Um, right now on Instagram. Reels, we're looking about 4,500 views. Woo! And on TikTok, about 2,500 views. Okay, you Instagram people, I will be signing autographs later <laughs> this week. TikTok, so, I'll just write on your Starburst. <laughs> yeah. So the true test here is, one, is video where it's cracked up to be? Is that where we should all migrate to? Is that where Reach is headed? As the consumer, as the end user, yes, I prefer watching these funny TikToks over scrolling through Instagram. That's so funny because I'm quite the opposite. I love scrolling through Instagram. I have my phone on silent at all times. I never answer a phone call on the first because I don't hear it. Um, But I love to be able to just silently scroll and see beautiful things. So the the thing with marketing, it comes down to testing. Yes. And it comes down to your different audience. You know, Corey, if she's curated her personal feed to be more photography based, but then Instagram announces that real thing, it's going to be up to you to test to see what truly is working for the account. But if you don't test, you just don't know. You don't know. So I did test on July 3rd. Okay. I made, I made, took a snazzy photo, my staged ones I always do. And I also made a reel of me making those cookies. I got about 2,700 views, which I thought was fantastic for me, who doesn't really post that many reels. Um, and then my photo did as my photo do. And did well. Yeah, but the, my but I'm I'm a photography based account, so videos are new for me. My audience wasn't prepped for videos, but Instagram gave me a little boost, and I got twenty seven hundred views. Okay, so to wrap up the marketing minutes, the TikTok challenge officially starts on Thursday and runs for thirty days. Thursday, uh, what is that day? Just for people who listen to this way late, that is the fifteenth. But you could jump in whenever. Really, if you just wanted to do the challenge, just post. 30 videos to TikTok and 30 videos to Instagram for 30 days and see what happens to your account at the end of 30 days. Okay. And Heather is actually making us be extra. So every video we filmed today, she also made me make a video of how we did it. Right. To give you guys some ideas. So a lot of this stuff is kind of what, like secondary humor. Yeah. Um, And you find these trends and you find the templates and you make your content fit into the template. Um, so for an example, there's this funny trend where somebody is at like a checkout line, okay. uh, like a drive through uh-huh. and she's saying, Hey, I would like a number seven. And the person at the drive through line says number 11, no, a number seven, a number 11, no, a number seven, <laughs> a number 11. So in the theory of TikTok is whenever you say, I want a number seven, it's something you do want. And the speaker coming back to you, number 11 is something that you don't want, but you end up with something you don't want. I love it. So if you're like, "Eh, that makes no sense to me, Heather did it. We were using the Eddie edible printer. Heather was making like misprints like it was her hobby. And every time she did an overlay, it showed the misprints when it says, hey, I would know a number 11, and then it would show the correct, no, a number seven. And if that is still confusing to you on TikTok, <laughs> we're sure you're cookie marketing, just click through there, scroll through them, and you can kind of see what we're kind of doing with this. I think it's a great test. I'm really into this. Mm-hmm. And and if humor isn't your thing, Heather and I love to laugh, so we like to make funny videos. If you want to do 30 uh cookie decorating videos that's a hundred percent fine that's a hundred percent what you can do you don't have to take a shower for it you can literally do what you do best and decorate as long as you film it and post it it totally a hundred percent counts love it okay so if you're horrified pretend you never heard this and that you didn't know about it right 
<laughs> but if you don't, Heather has created a weird event in the group that you can sign up to. <laughs> yeah, this is a 30-day challenge, and Facebook only ma- lets me make a 15-day event, so it is wildly <laughs> confusing. <laughs> so okay. jump on the band with us. I am super excited about that. The videos that we have coming up this week have had me rolling when we made them, so I am so excited to show those to you. Yeah. Well, today's was Reba McIntyre, <laughs> and if you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, you know. Okay, so on to the business of baking. As you always know, I love to learn a little bit more about why our brains do what they do. Even though we can't necessarily control it, we can be aware of it. Mm -hmm. So Corey, have you ever heard of the halo effect? Other than I'm mom's favorite angel baby. No, she's not. (laughs) Okay. So to the people in podcast world, if you're listening to this, do you think Corey and I would probably be good at public speaking? I know everyone's like, no, nope, you sound like nails on a chalkboard. Never thought you'd be. So <laughs> you, you don't count. Um, the rest of you can continue to listen. Those of you who thought that can turn off this podcast right now. Um, but here's the thing, right? The halo effect says, well, you guys seem pretty good at marketing. You know, Heather's absolutely hilarious. Corey kind of phones it in a bit. Um, you guys have a po- podcast. Yeah, I assume you're probably good at public speaking. But here's the thing. None of those things relate to public speaking. True. Digital marketing. We're behind computers. Right. Uh, podcasting. It is you and I. Still st- behind It's like computer. lunch, but with a mic. <laughs> hey, Corey's Still yelling sitting. into. <laughs> yeah. uh, selling sugar cookies. How much of selling sugar cookies is really you interfacing with somebody? It's still all behind a computer. <laughs> right. Behind a computer, behind a mixer, behind a piping bag. Very, definitely not public speaking. And if you're talking to anybody, it's one person at I'm your door. I'm screaming at the royal icing for separating. Right. <laughs> public, public yelling. Um, selling on Facebook. Again, you are sitting behind a computer and typing into so it. So what you've told me is really good behind a computer (laughs) right but it has nothing to do with public speaking right so there's no way anybody could hear you and i and say you guys are probably decent in front of a room full of 100 200 people which will be in front of eight. Yeah, I was people. just thinking, like, we're going to be... <laughs> don't what? tell Mike and Karen we don't public speak. <laughs> um, no, but the thing is, the halo effect says you're good at this, so you're probably good at something else. But that's irrelevant. Those two things are absolutely irrelevant. But here's an uh, examples of the halo effect in hit, practice. Hit me with it. Tall people are paid more than their counterparts that are shorter because we're trained to see tall people as successful. Weird. But being tall has nothing to do with talent. True. Nate, my husband, for those who don't know, is six foot five. Do you think he's better at other things because he's tall? No, but people treat him like with more respect when we're walking down the road. Like right. I look like his little kid. <laughs> oh, no, is that your dad? Um, organic food is perceived as healthier. Is that not true? It's not. No, you can have unhealthy organic food. It's just the way it was. Don't ruin my life. I'm getting I know, organic. Laura, it's going to be like cheeseburger my tomatoes. tonight. <laughs> uh, attractive pretty people are rated as smarter people have told me i look smarter than you (laughs) (laughs) twins buddy (laughs) nice people are are thought of as more moral Mm -hmm. but being nice and being moral are you could still be a bank robber and you know love your dog i say that okay yeah i agree uh well-behaved students are seen as more motivated (gasps) well behaved Uh yeah i agree uh attractive wait staff is tipped better I don't know. If you're good to me. Corey, I'm not asking you to disprove this. I'm oh, no, asking I'm you to agree you with it. Agreeing, agreeing. Okay, so that's the example of the halo effect. And I know if you disagree with these, you're not the majority. You're actually in the minority. These are proven how the brain operates. But none of the first things being tall correlates to the second being successful. Tall people are not smarter than shorter people. But for some reason, we can't help but see them as more successful. Mm-hmm. Um if they did a study, height has nothing nothing to do with success, but it's reported that for every inch you're taller than six feet, you make seven hundred dollars more than your counterpart. This How is mostly much men. Am I losing. <laughs> we are five four, so we're hemorrhaging money yearly. Uh, you know, pretty people aren't more mentally gifted. Organic food still has calories. A handsome waiter isn't more a, isn't a better waiter. Even though I can come back. And bring I would like a, a tall glass of water, you know. <laughs> uh, the halo effect is also known as the halo error because it's a cognitive bias that we as humans can't seem to stop ourselves from doing. Interesting. Uh, as such, the only way to counter a uh, bias is to be aware of it. And in some cases, we can actually use it in our favor. Okay, explain it how we could use it. Because I know everyone's like glossing over, like, how does this have to do with I'm trying to remember every waiter, waitress I've ever had. (laughs) Okay, so better photography of cookies equals probably 
better tasting cookies. I 100% agree. Well manicured lawn during a pop-up probably justifies the extra cost of your cookies. Yeah, feel the value there. Now imagine you go to a pop-up and there's, you know, the lawn's in utter disarray. Do you think that the kitchen is probably in disarray as well? Even though the outside and inside have nothing to do with each other, we make the... A natural assumption. Yeah, that if this is the way the outside's kept, well, it's probably the way the kitchen's kept. And these cookies probably aren't as good. Mm-hmm. Okay, well-curated Instagram feed equals probably a successful business owner, baker. When I scroll, I'm like, oh, they're... they're. They're well to do. Right, right. Nice hair and outfit at cookie pickup. Cookies probably worth more money. Hey, I try to take a shower every time we do cookie pickup. And, you know, I go down screaming and crying. <laughs> it does work. But listen, it's, it's you know, I, and I know you can disagree with this. It's, it's just the way our brains are naturally programmed and it's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. But as long as we're aware of what's happening and we can kind of use it in our favor, we could probably be better salespeople and better buyers. Um, so I always tell people... Kind of tie marketing into your your daily life because I know we talk about it as sellers and business owners, but do you think the the guy at the end of the street is nice because his lawn is well kept? There's it has think, nothing to do with each other. I know. I think people with what, nice lawns have money. I don't know why. Okay, so you think a nice lawn means more money? Yeah, I'm like you got. Even two. though the two are wildly irrelevant, because he's probably spending a ton of money <laughs> your on grass the lawn. is green and your wallet must be green. <laughs> uh, do you think that the lady at PTA whose Range Rover matches her purse is a good mom because she must have everything together because it's match? Even though having a Range Rover could mean that your kid can't go to college now. <laughs> <laughs> true, that's true. So basically, with this halo effect, it's just being aware of our biases and what we can fall prey to, so that way we can be better buyers and definitely more savvy sellers i absolutely love that i honestly didn't really kind of take time to think how does my mind work that way but it does work that way quite often Um, yeah if you could just if you could say hey nate is tall irrelevant how do you do at your job you know if you're talking if you are a business owner if you're an office manager however you talk to people (laughs) irrelevant of their height see how you could remove those factors a zoom meeting would remove somebody's height Right? Yeah, it would. So Everyone's the same yeah. height. Yeah, that's kind of that thing. If you're tall, they'll be like, no, no, we meet in person. <laughs> yeah. I need you to, I need a tower of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's super interesting. That is a good food for thought. Yeah, so a halo effect. And it was funny because Tembi mentioned like her uh, company put everyone through a class on it. And they call it the halo effect and the horns effect as the opposing Oh, that's, oh. So we have halo error, halo effect. And she called it the horns effect as the negative one. Yeah, which is, yeah. So it's pretty interesting to keep in mind how your presentation does affect how you're, they said, you know, he said like um, in the book that I was reading that people who were told that medicine was given to them, even though it wasn't, they were given a placebo, did heal more fast, faster, quickly, more, quicklier. more, or faster, quickly, faster. <laughs> <laughs> like that. But I think we've been in the group. If you aren't familiar with us yet, we've been really talking about packaging and the value, the perceived value it adds. A twenty cent bow makes something feel more expensive. It does. The values there, you can charge more, you can ask more, even though it's a tiny little bow made of little tiny ribbon from a bodabra or a bodabra for you, oh, old baby, little baby. <laughs> um, packaging does add a perceived value how they perceive it is up to them how we perceive it is up to us but in our marketing efforts we want to take those tips and tricks and tools um, in packaging in presentation and presenting ourselves at pickup and things like that and use that in our marketing to potentially get more value garner more value which means more money. I know it comes down to the almighty dollar, but you wouldn't be in a marketing group on selling and making money if you didn't want to know how to make more money. <laughs> Some people are like, no, I don't want to make more. Do you know, like, give me It more is money. against my principles to clean my yard up. From, I want them to buy if my cookies because my cookies are good. Okay, but that's not the way the brain works, unfortunately. So if we can have all our ducks in a row, look nice, yard looks nice, we're talking nice, we're, you know... Yeah. Learning how to public speak. It reminds me. My neighbor was like, oh, kind of let your backyard go because I live in a townhouse so she can look right over. I said, hashtag save the bees, girl. <laughs> That's our initiative. <laughs> That's why we're loving the weeds, girl. <laughs> we have some bees. <laughs> she does not find value with me. <laughs> so that's my my big thing is like just be – very aware of the halo effect and ask yourself, what things are you assuming about other people for things that are completely irrelevant? Okay. I like it. 
Okay, okay. so we have um, a couple of voicemails. I'm going to pull them up and let them play. Are you going to play that six minute or? <laughs> okay, here's so funny. Right, I, like we're setting up for the podcast today, and it, you know, I get an email notification when a voicemail left. And it says, hey, you just received a six-minute voicemail. And so Heather like, oh, thought what? it was juice, juice. A six-minute voicemail. I don't think I've talked on the phone for longer than six mi- minutes in the past, like, ten years. Yeah, so Heather ran down like a little giddy school kid. Right, okay, press play. I swear, like, it sounds... I can hear a man's voice, so I'm not sure if it's in the order line of McDonald's. <laughs> but then it's consistently sounding like I'm in a washing machine. Oh, and no. A butt guy. <laughs> it's six minutes of some inaudible noise. I let it play all the way through i felt insane but it's so funny um so we might have to call you back whoever you butt dialer is <laughs> i googled the number and i found her in the group <laughs> anyways here is an actual voicemail i missed my butt dial but this one is from emily i'm gonna let it play hi miracle twins long time listener first time caller uh, my name is emily i've been really enjoying the facebook group and podcast for a long time I have a question about um, kind of relaunching, rebranding, and relocating. I'm going to be moving cross-country in the next couple of months, and I'm kind of viewing it as an opportunity to start fresh and incorporate a lot of the things that I've learned from you guys. So my question is, would it be better to, like, really start from scratch with new social media accounts and and all of that, or would it be better to kind of uh, just transform what I currently have into the new new branding um, and be able to kind of keep whatever momentum I have currently on those pages going, um, or would that be just confusing or, um, yeah, just which, which makes more sense. Um, from a marketing perspective and which would um, have the greatest chance of success. Um, so yeah, thank you again for all you're doing. Uh, my favorite twin is whichever of you answers this question. So hopefully it'll be both. Thank you. Bye. Excuse me. I'm going to answer this question. Oh my goodness. Heather told me while that was playing, give it just a few seconds after so there's no interference with our voices. And look what she did. Threw me under the bus. I'm the favorite twin. Well, so. then you can take the answer there, man. Favorite twin. But this is a good one. And Corey and I talked about it before the podcast. It's basically, she's saying, hey, I'm moving. All my branding, all my target audience has been in my original town. Do I scrap it and start over? What a great question. It's a great question because a lot of people with the bakery business, especially uh, military Mm -hmm. Um, are constantly being transplanted. Right. So the question is, is that old audience dead weight or are they more, I mean, you worked for them, right? We're going to just. I I, The eyeballs you're giving at me make me think we're on the same wavelength here. Okay. I'm going to say mine. You tell me if you think I'm Okay. Okay. I say keep them, but let them know you're moving. So that way some people do drop off. That would be the goal. We do want page unlikes. But we want to keep those engagers that we did work for there, and they'll continue engaging with those photos and things like that. Thoughts? 100%. I think your transition people are going to be super happy for you. You are going to lose people. Obviously, you're moving. You no longer can service them in any regards, but you're going to have people that have fallen in love with you, Um, your bakes, everything like that, and they are going to be your loudest cheerleaders as you move into your new area. So when you move into your area, you don't feel like, uh, did this lady just start last night? Like, is this her first right. cookie? Yeah, I want to be a little, okay, they call them lookbacks. They call them lookbacks in the bank when you apply for a loan and they look back. <laughs> I mean, if you're, if you, if I'm assessing how I do this, I look, scroll back maybe to make sure that they've been posting a couple months. Right. Especially if you had reviews. Um, right. People you're love you regardless. Baker, regardless of where you live. Yeah. So I would 100% go with Heather and keep that going. Let those people know. Um, it's okay if you lose followers. You're going to get new ones wherever you go, but you want those fans to be able to uplift you in your new area where you're moving to. Which brings up a great point. Now, you're going to still have people from your old area asking you for orders, and we actually created a group directory, a members directory, and you can find it in my post, but I've also pinned it to the announcements. Um, basically, find somebody in your old area that you'd like to refer their work to. That way you can still keep your old audience still engaged. Hey, I'm happy. I can't fulfill it for you, but check out this person. They're really great. I really like them. Yeah. So you honestly become a 
benefit to your past clients because you're giving you're not sending them off into the cold dark lonely world of trying to find cookie a, lessness yeah cookie lessness you're giving them an option of someone you've reached out to and this is how you become friends with bakers i know when i first came to the area i wasn't ready to take on custom orders so i reached out to a few locals and said hey if i'm ever booked or if i can't do it would you mind taking these custom orders they said absolutely yeah i think we got to be friends with competition that's healthy yeah. Um, so my vote, Corey's vote is don't delete, don't start over. That's a lot of work. Um, you've worked really hard to get your engagement up to where it is, Emily. Congrats on the move, but keep it going. Yeah, keep it going. Don't but make sure that, hey, make sure that you update on your Facebook page, your Google My Business. You can update a location change as well. Make sure that the foot of your website, contact page, and Instagram all line up to the new location. And then I would put in the bios of those, of all those uh, profiles. Hey, I've recently moved. Yes. And keep that up for months and months because yeah. you got people that are only thinking about you around Christmas time or holidays. They're going to click to it and be like, well, why can't I order? Right. So maybe instead of uh, just moved, say relocated to Virginia or whatever it is, so people can see right off the bat where you are located from so they can just buy from you if they're local. Great. I love it. Okay. We have a text from Amy Russell. It said, after binge listening to the podcast all the way to Virginia, I have one question. Does Heather get a kickback from edible arrangements for her plugs? Amy, you would think she does, but she <laughs> does not. Amy had a lot of attitude and I didn't make I you like read her. this. Okay. Her other text said, I had to go answer the door three times. Corey keeps knocking on the table and it's all I can hear. Amy, you were my number one and now I don't know you. <laughs> Uh, you know what's so funny though? When she wrote that, I wrote Edible Arrangements and said, you guys have an affiliate program? Did they say they did? No. They don't? <laughs> I don't think they do. Oh, so who would be <laughs> repping? like, we're making money cash over fist. We don't need affiliates. <laughs> Who's repping Edible Arrangements? That'd be so funny. I Amy. Edible Arrangements. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Amy, I love you. Heather does not make a dime off of Edible Arrangements. Mm -hmm. They're so good though. Okay. We have our last voicemail. It's not a butt dial, unfortunately, but this one is from Crystal. Hey, uh, twins. Uh, my name is Crystal. Um, I've been making cookies for years, but I'm new at creating this as a business. My cottage uh, license was actually just approved last week. I set up my social media pages so that they'd be ready to go when I was ready to go, etc. cetera. Um, my goals are actually very simple. I want to do something that I love and make some extra money, uh, do a farmer's market here and there, um, maybe some pre-sales or monthly boxes something that gives me a little bit of a control of my schedule. I know I can hear everybody laughing now because I'm so afraid that like once I jump in, like I'm just going to be this big rabbit hole. I'm not going to be able to dig myself out of. Um, uh, I, I already have a full-time job. Actually, I work in radio advertising sales. So your podcast has actually helped me in my day job as well. Um, and I also have a part-time gig in which I'm a stand-up comedian which is a lot of fun, uh, but it keeps me busy some, you know, weekend nights, et cetera. So uh, also that means I love your sense of humor, <laughs> your senses of humor, sense of humor. I don't know. I'm not, uh, we need a teacher, I guess. Um, anyway, so the sucking up portion of my message is over. So now my question, I am so afraid of custom orders. Uh, just this morning, I got a request for a custom order on my business Facebook page. I don't even know how they found me. Um, so it, it's, it's odd, but anyway, I appreciate all of your help with the podcast because it's helped me to navigate that. But since I just really want to make some extra money and try to control my time as much as I can, my question really is, how do I set up my business making custom cookies when it's likely that I'll say no to most custom orders that come my way? Um, I have a really hard time saying no. Um, it got me married with a baby at 24, but that's a story for another day. <laughs> anyway, so that's basically my question is I'm, I'm afraid that once I get started, people are going to take my business card, see me at the farmer's markets, and then I'm going to get, you know, custom orders that I'm just not prepared to do, or I'm too afraid that I'm not going to have time to do. Um, and also, since I'm new, I guess that part of my concern is, is my, um, my ability. You know, I'm afraid of the, the brides that come with the, the colors that they want, the specific colors or um, I don't know. Those sorts of things just scare the crap out of me. So thank you so, so much for your time. Uh, you are both my favorite, of course. Bye. Crystal, that is a phenomenal uh, stand-up comedian. Man, that's what dreams are made Senses of. Senses of humor. Senses I think it's, of humor. I like it. <laughs> your senses of humor. That is a cool job. I 
like you work full time as well. I do cookies after dark, but not those kinds of cookies. Oh, yeah, there's a Facebook group called Cookies After Dark, and I was like, is this for late night bakers? Is this for late night stuff? <laughs> not those with bakers. Um, but you are, as you're growing, you are going to get people asking for custom orders because they just love what you do, what, love what you're showcasing online. But you, like me, have a full time job. We can't say yes to everything. We can't do 28 dozen a week and still have a life outside of baking. So what I actually do is I love to build a pipeline. Um, when someone reaches out and they say, Hey, I'm looking for a customer order. I say, Hey, I actually fill up rather quickly. I take a limited amount of orders each week. So the earliest you can give me and give me payment, the more you can end up on my books and have guaranteed something for whatever event you're having. Um, I know you said you were scared of custom orders. Hey, I too am scared of every custom order I get. So what I actually say to people is what date did you have in mind? And do you mind sending me an inspiration photo of something that's representing what you're looking for, for your event. What this does is sets my expectations of what they're looking for. So I can really see, is my skill level up to par where I could actually give them what they're looking for? You can either say, Hey, I am booked for those days, or you can be honest and say, I'm working every day and upping my skills, but I don't think I have the level of skills for that at this moment. Here is my Instagram account filled of the ideas and the skill level that I am at currently, I would love to make your party come true with a, and then navigate the sale that way. You're kind of setting their expectations. A lot of times people don't necessarily want that specific cookie. They want the idea of the set is what, I mean, I've gotten from my customers. I say, Hey, I don't have that cookie cutter. They're like, do your worst. Yeah, when I go get my haircut, I say, Hey, I like this. There's no, I, I just like the lady's hair because the ladies dropped it gorgeous. There's no way I'm expecting the perfect replica. Some people cut. do though. So if you can kind of navigate the sale that way and then build up your pipeline for, um, more of a long term thing. So I had someone reach out to me for an order in October. I said, Oh my God, you are reaching out to me at the right time time because I am now booked out till September. So this is perfect. I'm going to get you on my books, everything like that. So us people who have the full-time job, who can't really dedicate um, our 95s to baking, you're really building up that funnel and setting those expectations while also getting those expectations set for you in the same. Does that make sense? Is that helpful? Yeah. There's no way you don't have to say yes to everything, especially if you're not comfortable with it. And if somebody says, Hey, I'd like to place an order with you. Hey, I'd love to see what your concept is. Oh, wow. This is advanced and I don't have room for it in my calendar, but here's somebody I can refer you to. Mm -hmm. It's a completely fine way. You don't have to say, I I can try. That's not the confidence we want to inspire in people, but we also don't have to absolutely do everything. So I would lay off of advertising the customs. You will have people asking about them, especially if you're doing pop-ups and things like that. Absolutely. And then decide on a case-by-case basis. Do I want to take this order? Yes. Okay, great. Let's get it on the books. No. Hey, I know this person that can make this for you. Love them. Local baker. Yeah. That is how I do it, and it has worked very well for me. Great one. Great one. Okay. That wraps up our voicemails. Almost tempted to make you guys listen to that six-minute pocket dial, but we will <laughs> forego it. Here's some past lives that we've had in the last two weeks that you can go to the Facebook group, click on the events tab at the top, click on past events, and you can find these. And I've pinned the live video at the top of each. Okay. Um, how to make bag tags on the Avery website for free. That was by Belinda Cooley. Uh, she's very passionate about keeping it cheap and keeping it professional. And I think she found a great, awesome avenue by using the Avery website. You know, Avery labels, you can get them at like Walmart. Yeah. And, um, and they have the designer software for free, for free use for anybody. Um, we also did last minute intro to Canva with Lauren uh, Barkley Jacobs. That was really nice. Canva, it was the first time I downloaded Canva. Um, to even check it out. And you, it has a lot of power to it. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people absolutely love it. For those who think, how can Heather be a marketer without Canva? She is the Photoshop pro. Um, she makes everything in there. She acts like she doesn't know what she's doing, but everything that comes out looks like a million bucks. So okay. you need me to shave off 10 pounds, buddy. I got you. <laughs> um, we did pop-ups at home with Rochelle Wadley. And that one I love. Uh, she was having a pop-up. And I know, five we were like minutes. in there with her as yeah, she they were was setting, setting it up. up. They went through pricing. They went through things that they used to make the pop-up successful. And her, her husband signs. was lying there. Um, and then yesterday, Amy Russell, yes, from the text above about my edible arrangement, 
uh, subscription. She did cookie subscription boxes, aka cookie clubs, which is such a valuable tool because you're reaching the uh, the client one time, but selling to them continuously. Yeah. So, so she, she talked about have, billing. Yeah, she talked about billing about the design she was doing, but it's honestly a great marketing move because you're not having to remarket to them. Uh, they signed up. They obviously want your cookie, so they get it monthly. So almost like your marketing dollars work better for you because you're only having mm-hmm. to get them your into acquisition their costs is one time. I know. Uh, one cool thing, and I like to take away something from each live I watch is uh, she had somebody who bought the year in advance but every month says I want you to donate to whoever you'd like oh, so nice. yeah, isn't that so cute okay so we have upcoming events it's the live last minute brick and mortar cafe tour with Stacy uh, McWhirt she messaged me and said hey I don't want to clog up the feed with a commercial kitchen space if not everyone in the group is and I was like girl I think everyone wants space. to look at what your kitchen looks like right so she has an actual cafe and she's just going to give us a tour of it and she comes from a background of commercial kitchen management um, and she took that with her to her cafe oh, that's and she's amazing tell us hashtag goals right so that'll be tomorrow tomorrow is Wednesday Tomorrow is a Wednesday. Wednesday the 14th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All these uh, times are in Eastern Standard because the East Coast is the Beast Coast. <laughs> all of you guys are losers. Just our kidding. next... <laughs> okay, now we lost half of our listenership. <laughs> uh, our next is Selling in a Small Town Farmer's Market Tell All with Natalie Hess. And that is Thursday, July 15th mm-hmm. at 7 p.m. And she is going to say... She lives in a town of 300 but sells between 500 and $800 a week at her farmer's market. Yeah, so no excuses. Your buns better be there. Yeah, so that one will be a lot of fun. Then we have... a. Uh, Lydia Eldridge is doing a two-part series on photography. The first one will be Basics to a Better Photography, and the next one will be Lightroom Intro. These are, um, I'm so excited for mm-hmm. these. Well, her photos are super cute too, so I think that'll be great. Then we have uh, Designing Custom Tags, Cookie Cards, and Printables in Canva and Microsoft Word with Katie. Okay, um, so the great thing about this one is not Canva is paid. Some of aspects of it are paid, but Microsoft Word, you know, if you have it already, she's going to teach us how to use both, and she's going to do it really easy to uh, understand. So if you missed Lawrence, jump in on this one with Kate. Okay. And that will be Tuesday, July 20th at 8 p.m. Eastern. And that's just next week. And then lastly, but not leastly, the Martins are going to be baking it up with us. Um, James and Meredy, he's apparently the baker, and they're going to do a virtual macaron bake along. And we have the ingredients list. I've been shopping it. I look like an idiot trying to figure Can't out what wait. they mean. So they made the event, or I posted up the event. Everyone's like, feet, feet, feet. And I'm like, what? What? This world I found myself in. But she's <laughs> a fetishy world. <laughs> Did you, uh, what kind of, sw- is she doing the Swiss? Swiss method? I think the Swiss method. And then, is that the feet? They all have feet. I think. What is the Swiss method? No idea what makes it different. <laughs> I will learn from this live and I'll let you know. Yeah, but Meredy and her husband, they teach these classes uh, virtually. And now they're teaching us this class virtually. So it's like so a two for, for one. <laughs> you can kind of learn how they do online classes. Plus, we can make a few max in the intro. Love it. Love it. Okay. Group challenges, upcoming events. We've just talked about Instagram reels, TikTok, 30 day sugar cookie marketing group challenge. And that starts on Thursday, July 15th. And we're going to run it until Thursday, whatever 30 August days. 50. Right. Right. <laughs> Sounds right. <laughs> uh, then we have our logo collab for July, which is a lot it's of fun. It's not a logo collab. I'm so sorry. You keep calling it I that I cannot get the word logo <laughs> collab out of my head. It's the then and now cookie collab. With Sugar Cookie Marketing, Corey, what is it? So then and now, the first cookie that you had that you took a physical photo of, we are going to recreate it. And I love when our collabs have a little bit more of a marketing base to it. So this is going to be able to show your customers how far you've come. So if you made a simple heart, you're going to make a more intricate heart this time. Because she made a simple heart. (laughs) And I hopefully can make it a more intricate heart. So So I think this will be a lot of fun. I think we can see multiple ways to upload these. Are you going to do two post, multi, multi post? Multi photo uploads? I might make a collage. I don't know. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. Right. But I'm sure one is going to perform better than the other. I could see uh, the ugly original photo and then swipe right to see, you know, where but I'm that's going to make my feet so ugly. No, I don't. But there's also, that's also good too. There's a marketing strategy behind that too. So I'm really going to think about it, hopefully nail it down. I really have to make the cookie look better than what it used to be. But the bar is low. <laughs> I think it'll be a lot of fun. I can't wait to see what people come up with. I think we have round. 
200, 150 people signed up for that? I think we did. Last challenge, we had about 150 to 200 people partake in it. It was, was highly good. successful. I really did enjoy it. Our last event is Late Lunch and Learn and Link Up the 4 Hours with Sugar Cookie Marketing. This is where me and Heather are going to meet you face-to-face. So we're going to put that public we speaking to see the test. We don't know how to speak in front of other people. <laughs> but that is August 26th from 2 to 4 is the learning part. And that we are going to wine and dine together in a room, talk about some strategies. And then we have a happy hour from 4 to 6. You can just Drop come in, in as you yeah. are. Um, we only have one more golden ticket to that See but what you did there now i want it more now you want it more see it's marketing strategy but i think we are gonna at least i'm gonna try to make some cookies for us to eat there oh that'd be so fun i know Maybe we should bring the eddie and just print i thought we we're gonna print on these cookies that'd be great, okay, that'd be great. <laughs> um cookie con so we've got some fun news for that one we're we are combining forces with the 3d printers Ba-na-na-na. sam and augusto from sam's cookie university want to host a co-mixer which is a game night yes um, with us so it'll be team twins i think we'll do the the 3ds against the bds bds <laughs> i don't know i'm gonna pull that out of my butt after you know, i had to listen to it by dial uh but yeah so be, but yeah i guess so, I like, guess. Oh, yeah, so. um so cookie con orlando is where Corey and i will be doing the closing now we can see this true test of public speaking we'll be doing the closing ceremony um yeah. giving the final speech there which is so awesome we'll be doing a breakout room where we're just going to film the podcast yeah the so podcast. if you want to be there live and see how awkward we are while we do it and how many eyes heather makes at me for being too close to the microphone be you there have your ears bleed in person <laughs> Um, and then, you know, cooking on all these events, we're getting a lot more. Actually, Greg, if you're listening to this, which I'm sure you are, sign up for a Facebook Live. i got to set it up. All these events I have created a public Google, Google calendar for. So you can subscribe and be annoyed with us, even through Google. Share that on when you post the podcast to the group. Share that linkage. Okay, we'll. okay. Twin Trust. I've been working. I'm not interested in anything. I have been slaving away. I've been saving away till I, mine is empty. Mine is empty as well. We're well, interested in nothing. <laughs> in ourselves. But actually so. what we've truly been working on is we are working on the course launch. And I know we've talked about it for 20 years now. But we want to take all the knowledge we covered here where it's kind of fragmented and kind of create it in one paid course. And just have us break down everything from start to finish from Photoshop, which I love. To Canva, which I'm learning as well, to, to TikTok, photography, to photography, and things like so that. So today we spent the majority of today filming. We took Corey to Hobby Lobby. We <laughs> I record, I recorded her walking through Hobby Lobby, her mecca, and then she took it home and she created a staging environment and she photographed it. And she's going to tell us in the course kind of what she liked, what she hated, why she buys, what she does, which backdrops are great, which backdrops are cost effective. No, they're not the same. <laughs> no, but it was honestly really fun. Also, me and Heather are working. This is my twin dress. Can I interrupt with my twin dress? We are working on healthier hair. And do you know the number this one thing one. to invest in for healthier hair is a silk pillow I have been slipping and sliding all night long. <laughs> but not only does it help your hair, it helps your skin as well. So we got silk or satin. Not quite sure if they're the same thing. But I got satin maybe because it was cheaper. I think it was silk. Anyways, I don't know. I got now the cheapest you, now one I'm on Amazon. I think you needed to get so, but it's still very slippery. Okay. So when I do, <laughs> I don't know if up, that's the the buying reason for it. It's a slippery pillow. <laughs> I'm slipping through my fingers, not through my fingers. Um, but yeah, that was a good one. So we got this. Our hair is naturally wavy. It, frizzy. it ain't frizzy. Is the that would be word. true. But allegedly, your hair isn't frizzy. It's just damaged. Damaged. Oh, so then definitely damaged. So me and Heather are being weirdos and like have invested in weird stuff. Brushes, uh, uh, denim brush, uh, hair tie, squeegee thing, uh, I don't microfiber. Know. Like I got my hair in a bun, like my mom used to when you get out of the shower and you like wrap the towel. And Everyone's then... like offended at you because they probably still do. That. <laughs> you do. So we are gonna see if we can't make this mop a little bit prettier. <laughs> if not, we're gonna shave it off. Okay, sponsors. Fun. You see, that was a plural. Oh, with an S. Yeah. Okay, so Eddie's still a sponsor. Love you guys. Eddie's <laughs> about to raise their price. This was actually very nice of them to give us some runway. Runway. So at the end of August, correct? Also talk about holy FOMO. I am yes. worried I didn't. Was it the end of August? Was it the beginning of August? Some, I think at the end. 
Okay, sometime in August, Eddie is going to raise 5%, which is a total of $145, which is almost equivalent to an ink cartridge from them. But they're going up in price because things that they have purchased, like the cost of, it's not aluminum, what's the thing that they use? Steel? No, what's the thing on the refrigerator upstairs? That mm. reflecting. Why can I not think of this word? <laughs> Aluminium. It's not that. <laughs> no. Oh, it's on the tip of the It's gem. not steel. It's not steel. It is. Metal. Okay, you just actually talking. I'm just going to go because it will kill me. Okay, why Corey frantically Googles what our fridge is made out of. They are raising the price. If you wanted to get one, great. If not, some people are waiting for like, hey, I bought this and it's a waste of my money. I saw a man post in the Stainless edit. Stainless steel. <laughs> very, yeah, but it still sounds layered. so heavy. <laughs> this man, surprise, I hope you not listen to this podcast, but he posted in the Eddie group and he said, hey, I surprised my wife with one of these. What should I do when she figures it out? How any recommendations on marriage counselors? Because <laughs> <laughs> of the price. And then he said, if I needed to sell it because she hates it, would, would I be able to sell it for at cost? And somebody's like, yeah, take a couple hundred bucks off of it and I'll buy it for me. Oh, I think so. So if you have not, definitely now is the time to consider purchasing your best boyfriend ever. (laughs) Okay, now intro to our second sponsor. We have a new sponsor. I should do a little... I don't know. I had to give her something. No, I like it. I like it. I buy whatever you're about to sell. (laughs) We actually... This was very fun for me because I was able to use it last night. And you know we love to use what our sponsors make. And this is a meringue powder recipe sounds delicious. not necessarily recipe it's the meringue powder it's the actual thing that you're putting into your royal icing i have tested every mp is what you short for it meringue powder out there there's meringue powder acronyms mp for your ri <laughs> man, man, I sound hip. um so this meringue powder was super i absolutely loved it so i actually next, this is the no i put it through the course i okay. usually use genies it's very common and one of the most well-known ones where do you get it from amazon i buy it from amazon but a lot of bake shops have it so okay. you can find it in a lot of places um but i've used you know hobby lobby's brand joint fabrics whatever michael sells wilton's i've used genies i've used casey i think and they rebranded to another name and now i've used this one and i will say i was I was decorating those cookies we used today. Heather saw them today. And the nice part about it was my flood icing didn't crust over so fast that I felt like I couldn't go back and pop bubbles and things like that. I know. I think I'm actually going to have to buy this myself. (laughs) This is not just (laughs) us. But I really enjoyed how smooth it was. And I don't know. Did it have less bubbles because of the meringue powder? Did it have less bubbles because I did something right this time? I don't know. I like any time that we can one support another group member two she paid to be this podcast sponsor so that's awesome and it you know frankly we put a lot of work into this podcast so <laughs> I, I have to listen to Corey for an hour but yeah, i know she's from idaho so it's small business and i love it so her facebook page is bakety bake idaho so it's you know forward slash mm-hmm. bakety is b-a-k-e-t-y bake b-a-k-e and then idaho the website is bakety bake idaho.com and then you can find her on instagram bakety bake and I would like to add, and she used this very technical word that I had to right, Google. Give me the abbreviation. MP for now. Right? <laughs> no, from this PD. was c- c- good color fastness. Oh, Do you even know what that stands? I'm going to say that the color develops more quicker. I love what you faster. were going there, but it's actually less apt to bleed. Oh, well, that would be great for you. <laughs> That is my arch nemesis, but she actually gave me a great how-to on how to use this meringue powder to prevent color bleed, to make it really work for me. So I am going to use it for a custom order this week, and I am going to let you know. Plus, there's a few more tips I'm going to give you throughout the month, and a few more like why you should get this and why you should test it out, because um, I am falling in love fast. I get a taste test soon. Um, hopefully with the extras from this order from this weekend. That I got to print the cutter for? Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Need I it. bought a <laughs> Sam from Sam's Cook University Bella plugin. She's not a sponsor, so don't worry about it. But um, apparently it lets me size up and size down cutters real fast. Okay, do well, yeah. Heather loves to create them wrong three times before she creates the right one the right time. So 
If you haven't, Heather, give us where we can find a Bakety Bake. Uh, like I just said, we're going to do it again. Bakety Bake Idaho. What did you just call me? <laughs> BakeityBakeIdaho.com is where you can order. It's a Shopify website, so woohoo, my Shopify people. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can order from Courtney there. And Corey really loves it. I can't wait to eat it. And it is on its way to you shortly, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. ma'am. Free of free ma'am. of charge, ma'am. ma'am. Always, ma'am. 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 All right, mailbag. Sad. Okay, I thought there was a package, but it was a shirt I ordered myself. <laughs> and I would send some stuff. Very disappointed. Um, mailbag. I don't know how I got to plead with you guys. I don't care if Maybe it's like just. A is it about your, your kids? Paid bill. Send me that paid bill void on there. Something. Send me a picture of your last bake. Some just something. Your bakety bake. I'll, I'll talk about it here, guys. I'll, I'll make you famous. <laughs> okay, but that address is fifteen thousand Potomac Town Place. Suite 245, Woodbridge, Virginia, 22191. And I know Heather forgot to mention where you can call and leave us a voicemail or yeah, a text. Really focused on the butt dial. It is 571-556-5644 or hello at sugarcookiemarketing.com. That is all we had for you guys this week. Thanks again for putting up with us. Share the word. Spread the word. Don't spread your cookies in the oven. I'm working on the tagline. We'll get it there. We'll get it there. I feel like we're really close. That was really good. All right. Okay.